Hello Internet! Last week we have recorded unboxing and overview of Verney Apollo. If you haven't watched it, you can find the link to the video in the description below. If you have, you may want to watch it again or continue to watch this video to see a full review of the device. So without any further ado, let's just start our full review of Verney Apollo. One of the main features of Verney Apollo is its very nice 5.5 inches LTPS display with 2K resolution and very thin side bezels. It's very sharp and bright and moreover it's probably sharpest and brightest display for a price. Screen isn't fading and allowing you to comfortably use your phone even on the direct sunlight. Surprisingly, but multi-touch support only 5 touches which is not really a big deal since it's difficult to find a use for more touches, however it is still worth mentioning and for whatever reason some people may find it unacceptable. As I mentioned in the unboxing, developers were positioning phone as device suitable for VR due to display 2K resolution. And this time it's actually true, but not with the standard VR headset. I've tried to use it with the different apps and videos, but it's given me this motion sickness. Moreover, after several games my eyes start to hurt. It wasn't happening to me when I was using a better quality headsets. The sound of Verne Apollo speakers is okay. I mean, it is loud, but it's definitely lacks of bass and overall depth. Moreover, when you're using your phone in horizontal position, you have a very big chance to cover the speaker with your hand. The situation is changing a bit when you're using the headphones. However, I can't really judge since, and I'm sorry for that, I don't really have any good headphones. Verne Apollo has 21 megapixel rare Sony camera and 8 megapixel front camera. Camera app is quite fast to open, but requires about 0.5 second delay to make a picture. Application itself is standard Android app with no additional settings. 21 megapixel Sony rear camera is super nice in most of the cases. Among the drawbacks, besides little overexposure, common problem of almost every phone camera also has problems making photos on the direct sunlight, making pictures a bit yellowish. Low and mixed light photos have elevated level of noises which is also quite common. Sony camera though can please you with the excellent night shoot. Photos turn out sharp and have low noise level. In total, Verne's rear camera is cut above most of the phone cameras in this price segment and will fit most of the users perfectly. Even more, I would especially like to note 8 megapixel front camera which seems to make sharp saturated photos in literally any light condition. It basically doesn't have any flaws and it's actually one of the best front cameras I ever seen in general. There isn't much to say about Apollo's UI since here, like in the most cases with the Chinese brands, it's using standard Android UI with minor changes mostly provided by MediaTek. These alterations include mirror vision that allows you to set up the display and sound enhancement that will slightly improve the sound in the speaker and headphones. And that is all, no more alterations, purest Android. The device builds on new DECA core processor MediaTek Helio X25 and ARM Mali 880S GPU, which basically should guarantee almost perfect gaming performance. However, device also have 2K display, which of course affects Verna's performance. So like that on ultra high specs, Epic Citadel showing the results 46 FPS. It's not bad, but with the lower resolution it could have performed much better. And to 2 given to Verne Apollo score 76,000. Games are running nice and smooth and right now I don't think there are any game for mobile devices that will not work smoothly on this device. Moreover, I don't think that there will be any games anytime soon that will run lower than 30 FPS on this phone. Battery life is a bit low, improving that 2K resolution is not the best choice for a phone with battery 3000 mAh. It can run Epic Citadel on ultra high quality for about 2 hours, which is equivalent to 2 hours of gaming. During the normal use, phone can hold the battery charge for about 10 to 14 hours depending on usage. Luckily the device also has quick charger that will quickly fill the battery within an hour. In general I like Verne Apollo. As any other phone it has its flaws such as bumping camera, mediocre fingerprint scanner and short battery life, but it also has its advantages and among them very smooth performance, nice rear and front cameras amazing 2K display, quick charger and of course beautiful design. And that is all for today, I am Elijah, if you liked the video please subscribe to our channel down below, give us your thumb ups and share your opinion about the device and review in the comments section. Thank you for watching and farewell!